Welcome, my fellow Earthlings, to my little geek corner. I've decided today that I'm going to do a little Q&A for you guys. Um, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Just forgive me if you see me reading. I got to read the questions, right? Um, Jack Fitzpatrick. That. Sorry. Okay. Also, I'm probably going to mispronounce a whole lot of names, and I'm sorry for that. I'm, it's just, just the nature of the beast. So anyway, Jack Fitzpatrick, who uh, has his own YouTube channel. He's uh, Let's Crash This Parade. He's, he's a good guy. Um, he makes my little tiny DVD collection over there look like the tiny little collection that it is. He's he's a big old collector. He makes me look like I got nothing. Um, anyway, uh, he asks why the decision to go on camera, which is, I felt like, an appropriate question to start with. Um, really, it's it's... I've always intended to do this at some point. Um, because I feel like I should connect with my audience a little more. And since my subscriber count is over 2,500 now and still going up pretty fast, I might add, um, I figured, you know, I, I should say hi and, you know, be a person, not, not some disembodied voice. Besides, my alien overlords wanted me to do something to make you think that they are not actually in control of me. Um, so anyway, next question. Trash Pondo Pons asks... There have been many remakes of vintage sci-fi over the years, and they are unilaterally awful. In your opinion, which are the worst? Well, first I'm going to push back a little bit on the premise, because there are some good remakes uh, of vintage sci-fi. I mean, I've covered a, a few here. There's The Thing, there's The Fly, uh, the first Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake, you know, stuff like that. It's There are good ones. Um, but he is right that most of them are pretty terrible. Uh, I would say some of the worst are the 90s Body Snatchers, the one that's in a military base. I know it has its fans, but I'm not one of them. Um, the Rollerball remake is just awful. I can't imagine anybody seeing it and saying, that's a great movie! I think even like eight-year-old boys would think it's a little hyperkinetic. Um, but the absolute worst, hands down, no question, the first one that pops in my mind is The Day the Earth Stood Still. Uh, I like everybody involved. I like the director, Scott Derrickson. I like the actors. I like Keanu Reeves. I like Jennifer Connelly. But, wow, that movie's bad. Um, and it's not the environmentalist message. Anyone who knows my politics knows that that doesn't, like, affect me. Um, but, ugh, it's just, it's just a bad movie. So, next, uh, Jason Caldas asks, Of all the films you've covered, which would you remake if you had the power and why? Um, you see, that's a good question because... In my opinion, a remake, you shouldn't remake a great movie. You know, you should remake a flawed movie. Uh, a movie that has potential that it didn't reach. Um, like, if Rollerball hadn't already been remade, I would say Rollerball. Because there's a great movie in there, I just, I don't feel like the movie that we have really lived up to its potential. Um, but barring that, I would say Logan's Run. Um, Logan's Run isn't a bad movie, it's, it's a really good movie. But I think with modern technology, a slightly better script, which, you know, I feel like I could write. And, you know, following a little bit closer to the book, I think using some of those same themes, you could make something that's relevant to today, as relevant as it was back then, and uh, make a really good movie. Um, so yeah, Logan's Run would be my answer, definitely. I, uh, I would write that script in a heartbeat. Um, Lauren Jones asks, are there any more sci-fi monster films you plan to cover in the future, such as Creature from the Black Lagoon or the giant Gila monster? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but Creature from the Black Lagoon is right there, ready to go. Um, but I've also got, uh, just in terms of giant monsters, I've got like Deadly Mantis, I've got more Godzilla and King Kong movies coming, I've got Tarantula. Uh, but yeah, there's other monster movies. Alien, obviously, I'll get to that someday. Um so on and so forth. So yeah, most definitely. Uh, the Clutch Canuck asks, your channel has been all sci-fi. Have you thought of expanding your criteria or are you comfortable with that specific genre for this channel? Regardless, your channel has been a pleasant discovery and I'm looking forward to see it grow. Thanks, Canuck. Um, I like your channel too. I, I, your humor really, really speaks to me. I love it. Um, but I think most of us probably Barnaby. You owe, his, you owe your success to him. Um, but let's see... It's a good question because I have thought about it. I have thought about doing things other than science fiction. Um, what I'm what I'm kind of noodling around with my head right now is like maybe in October, instead of doing sci-fi movies, I'll just do straight up horror movies. Because I mean, I love, obviously I love the classic universal horror movies. And there's some that 
no matter how much I try, I can't make them science fiction. I mean, The Wolfman, Dracula, um, The Mummy. I mean, I guess you could kind of, sort of say it's sci-fi because archaeology is a science, but even I can't stretch it that far. Um, but yeah, there's there's other horror movies I would love to cover because horror is my second favorite genre, really, um, of genre movies. Um, but there's other genres I do love. I do love 80s action movies. I could totally do a whole series of 80s action movies. I could do mystery movies, um, you know, and there's also a classic movies that don't really fall into a genre category that I could do. Uh, like if there's a movie that I know better than 2001, it would be Casablanca. Um, but there's no way I could make Casablanca a sci-fi classic. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, uh, I've thought about it. Uh, I probably won't anytime soon, but uh, maybe in October you'll see some horror ones. I don't know. Um, the grand old Duke of New York says, what is your name? What is your quest? And what is your favorite psychological horror movie? <laughs> okay, uh, well, my name is Eric. Um, my quest is to make a handful of pennies out of YouTube using what I learned in film school. Um, and my favorite psychological horror movie is Jacob's Ladder. The original, not the remake, just, just so we're clear. That's another really, really bad remake. Um, Paul Stan, where was the thing from another world film? Okay, now, as I understand it, and, and I'll admit I, I did research this question before starting this video. Um, as I understand it, they, they wanted to film it in northern Montana, and that's where they went originally. They expected it to be really snowy, and they could get a lot of their footage there, um, but it didn't snow. So they only filmed there for about a week, and most of the footage they did film wound up on the cutting room floor. Uh, and so instead they went to a, um, uh, what's it called? A, um, a nice house down in downtown LA. They filmed a lot of stuff there. And uh, then they filmed on the, the RKO Ranch in Encino, where they used a bunch of fake snow. So, there's your answer. Um, if I, if I had made a video about the thing from another world now, instead of back then, I probably would have put all that information in because that's something that like I've been doing a lot more lately is adding filming locations and stuff. Sorry about the squeaky chair, by the way. Um, no market media, which if you've watched my channel long enough, you know about no market media. I've told you about them before, but seriously, go check out their channel. They deserve way more subscribers than they've got. Um, there are definitely nineties sci-fi films that are considered classics. <coughs> Sorry. There are definitely 90s sci-fi films that are considered classics, and they are going to be reaching 30 plus years old. Anything from the 90s on your mind? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I do have this rule that I don't do anything younger than 30 years old. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going into the 90s now. Um, and for 1990, I've already got a couple movies on my list that I want to cover soon. Um, there's Total Recall, obviously. Uh, Flatliners, which I haven't actually seen since I was since since the 90s. Um, but I remember really liking it and I really kind of want to look into it again. And then uh, obviously the Joe Bob Briggs movie of the 90s, Frankenhooker, that has to be on there. Although I, I don't know how I can do that on YouTube and not get demonetized. <laughs> um, and then uh, for this year, which would be 1991, would be 30 years ago to this year, um, there's Star Trek VI, obviously, um, and a movie called Until the End of the World, which most of you probably have never heard of, but I really, really, really want to cover it. Um, in fact, in here I've got the, the just recently released extended edition version of it, it's a ridiculously long movie. It's like, I think eight hours, maybe. Um, it's really, really long. Um, but it is one of the greatest movies nobody's ever seen. And I would really love to cover it. Um, again, until the end of the world. But there's other, there's other 90s movies beyond that too. Uh, I have a list here, um, so I'm gonna read. But this, and this is no by no means an ex, uh, exhaustive list. This is just the movies that popped in my head when I was making this list. Uh, Free Jack, The Lawnmower Man, Jurassic Park, Demolition Man, The Puppet Masters, Stargate, Ghost in the Shell, Gattaca, Johnny Mnemonic, Species, Strange Days. Oh my God, Strange Days. Uh, Twelve Monkeys, the the three good Gamera movies. They were from the '90s. Uh, Independence Day, uh, Contact, Cube, Event Horizon, The Fifth Element, uh, Dark City. Another movie that I'm dying to talk about, but that's I think 1998. So it's gonna be a long time before I can get to that one. Uh, Existence, uh, David Cronenberg, uh, The Matrix, and, uh, you know, Wing Commander. I had to put that in there. <laughs> um, so, okay, let's go back to Jack Fitzpatrick. Uh, you know, let's crash this parade. He asks, have you found it to be an advantage to focus on a specific niche for your channel? Uh, and how long do you take to research a video? Well, for the first part, yeah, it has helped to have a specific niche. I mean, if I just reviewed modern movies, you know, 
I, there's a saturation on YouTube. There's just too many people talking about that. And if I talked about classic horror movies, same thing. Uh, if you look around for classic horror movies, you'll find thousands of channels devoted to just that. But sci-fi, I mean, it's there on YouTube, but it's not it's not as big. So and uh, you know, some of the more obscure movies I cover get a lot of traffic, like Ailita, which I didn't expect to get any traffic. In fact, if you watch that one and you go to the credits, I'd say. I know this one's not going to get a lot of views, but it really did. It really does. It brings a lot of people to my channel because it's so obscure. Somebody look, types in YouTube, Ailita, and my video is like the first thing that pops up. And uh, the other one that really has lately been taking off is The Man Who Fell to Earth, the David Bowie movie. So like the more obscure ones I do are really good. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, my niche has really helped. And how long does it take to research a video? Okay, the, the short answer is a really long time. Um, like days. <laughs> I mean, it's probably the longest part of my process. When I first started, it wasn't. Um, in fact, I'm kind of embarrassed by my first like 20 or so videos because I didn't do my homework. I, uh, I would like base most of my information on audio commentaries or, you know, perusing IMDb and Wikipedia, which is like the worst thing you can do. So like I... Uh, <laughs> Those make me mad, kind of. Um, but nowadays, yeah, I spend a ton of time. Um, you'd think it would be easier to do big movies because there's so much information out there. Um, but it's actually more daunting because there's so much information out there. Um, so you have to weed through a lot and you got to read the same thing over and over again. Like a lot of little tiny factoids get repeated constantly and you've got to just filter that out eventually. <clears throat> um, and yeah, it's not just internet either. You know, you got to go to books and uh, if I weren't such a horrible introvert, I would actually like interview people, but I can't do that. <laughs> um, well, I could, but I don't want to. Um, but for smaller movies, it's actually easier nowadays. When I first started, it was really hard because I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where to look. Uh, but nowadays I know where to look for really obscure information. Um, and learning Japanese has really helped with the Japanese movies I cover, like the, the Toho classics. Um, but yeah, short answer, takes a long time. Now, Jack also asks, uh, what's your favorite sci-fi monster and what's your fave MCU movie? Um, well, my favorite uh, sci-fi monster is, well, there's Godzilla, of course. I own every single Godzilla movie. I'm a Godzilla nut. Um, but other than that, uh, the Xenomorph? Yeah, uh, it's, it's so iconic and it's such a perfect, like, metaphor for I don't know, the, the fear of the unknown. Uh, I love the Xenomorph. He's great. Um, so yeah, there's the, oh, and my favorite MCU movie. Um, I know these are the easy answers, but I gotta be honest, my favorites are Captain America, uh, The Winter Soldier, and um, Avengers Infinity War. I mean, I know those are the easy answers, but those are mine. Um, okay, LA November 2019 asks, I've never been asked a question by a setting before, but here we go. Your fave dystopian films, maybe narrow down to a specific decade or two. Okay, um, for dystopian movies, I love this question because dystopian movies are my jam. Um, any the the five of you out there who have actually read anything that I've written, you'll know that that's what I do. I write dystopias. Um, but my f my favorites, if you had to narrow it down to a decade, I'd definitely definitely say the seventies. There's no other correct answer. It has to be seventies. Those are those are the best dystopias. Um, there are a couple of good ones in the 80s, movies like Brazil, The Road Warrior, uh, Blade Runner. Um, but the 70s have all the greats. They've, it's Silent Running, Soylent Green. Uh, wow, there's so many. Um, THX 1138, The Omega Man. I think I'd even count Alien. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, Lee Morante asks, If you had to ride a dinosaur into battle, naked, armed only with a baguette and a cheese string, what flavor dinosaur would it be? Um, well, that's easy. Great. Uh, next question. Grunt167 asks, what films occupy your pantheon of greatest 50s sci-fi movies? Ask me a harder question next time. Jeez. <laughs> um, well, I've covered most of the ones I would consider the greatest, the ones that would be in the pantheon. Um, you know, like uh, Destination Moon and the, the the Big Three from 1951, which is The Day the Earth Stood Still, A uh, Thing from Another World, and When Worlds Collide. Um... But there's also like The Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, uh, War of the Worlds, uh, Forbidden Planet, obviously. Um, but for ones that I haven't covered yet, let's see, The Blob. Uh, I might include the Quatermass movies, although people outside of Burden aren't as big on those as, uh, as they are. Um, 
guess that's it. Well, 29 from outer space. Stupid! Stupid! My boy Siler, Siler Magic. He's another YouTuber. He does magic. If you're into that, check out Siler Magic, one word. Uh, nerd alien lands on Earth and asks you for the five best sci-fi movies. What do you give him to watch? Now, I love this question because it's not as simple as it seems. Okay? He's not just asking me what are the five best sci-fi movies. He's asking, what would I give an alien who's asking for the five best sci-fi movies? And the problem with that, the, the distinction there, is that most sci-fi movies, and I do really mean most, are about aliens and how people react to aliens. Um, and I don't necessarily want aliens to see all of that, because most of them don't paint a very good portrait of humanity. Um, I'm not going to show them alien either, because, like, that says that we are terribly afraid of them, and no, you know, it's stuff like that you don't want to do. Um, so I would try to pick movies that give a broader spectrum of humanity. Movies like Contact. Okay, number one, Contact. Uh, not only is it, like, pretty much one of my favorite movies of all time, but it does. It, it shows a really good mixture of how humanity would react to First Contact uh, with an alien. Um, and I think it really, it really, like, captures the spirit of humanity in a really good way. Um, yeah, so Contact would be number one. Number two, uh, 2001, because as we all know, Stanley Kubrick was an alien, so maybe they could explain it better than I could. Um, and then Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars is very archetypal, archetypical? I don't know, uh, of like, you know, just just how we, how we think and how we feel. Um, I mean, it's this crazy sci-fi fantasy. In fact, I would qualify it more as fantasy than sci-fi, but you know, whatever. Um, so I, I just think it gives a really good picture of, of, of our fan, of our fantasy. Uh, I think that's important. I'd also throw in some foreign movies. You know, I don't want them to have an American centric view of the world. Um, even if I have one, I try not to, but I do. Um, so let's see Solaris. I mean, I gave him 2001, so I might as well give him the counterpoint. Um, and La Jetie because that one is so poetic. It's it's a, it's a really short movie. The Chris Marker, France. Um, it's the movie that inspired Twelve Monkeys, um, and it's mostly just like still pictures. It's not really a movie movie. It's it's kind of like artsy, but it's really beautiful, and I think it really captures uh, an emotional state that very few movies can capture, and I think that would help them understand humanity. So, so that's my answer. Uh, Contact, two thousand one, um, Star Wars. Solaris and Legetti. Yeah. Um, oh, and Silar Magic also asks me what's my favorite playing card. I don't know why he's asking this, but uh, I'll go with the easy one. Ace of Spades. <laughs> okay, that was my last question. Um, I'm done. Uh, thanks. Uh, I'll probably do this again, uh, maybe in a few months. I don't know. It depends on how much you guys like it and uh, how many questions I get. So feel free to ask more questions in the comments for next time. Um, Please tell me I'm doing a good job because I'm crippled with self-doubt and I need to hear it all the time. <laughs> but no, honestly, you guys have been great. Uh, I When I first started this channel, I expected my comment sections to be filled with you know usual internet vitriol, but I haven't really seen that yet. Maybe if my channel gets too big, it'll start happening. Um, so you, I've, I've gotten nothing but support and good, good vibes from you guys. And I've met a lot of really cool small YouTubers out there. Um, again, I got a shout out. Um, no Market Media, uh, Let's Crash This Parade, uh, The Cl the Clutch Canuck, and uh, Siler Magic. Um, am I forgetting anybody that asked me questions? Uh, I don't think I am. Um, so yeah, just, just go check those guys out too. You know, little YouTubers like us need support. Um, so anyway, that, uh, I guess that's all for today, fellow Earthlings. Um, until next time, um, you know, you know what I say. You know my thing. Why can't I remember? <laughs> okay, you know, I, I got it. Until next time, this is the Unapologetic Geek telling you to never be ashamed of what you love. As long as you're not hurting anybody. Bye.